This essay is called Evaluating Gajev's Aphorism of Faith, Love, and Hope, or How Lentro Hampson and Lenin Trotsky Stalin Destroyed It. All and Everything Beelzebub Stales to His Grandson, Chapter 26, 360-361. And so, my boy, when, as I have already told you, early in my last descent in person, onto the surface of your planet. I first became acquainted in detail with this legomenism and had at once become interested in the deductions of this later, most high, very saintly, common cosmic individual, Ashiata Shaimash. There existed neither any other legomenisms nor any other sources of information concerning his further very saintly activities among those favorites of yours. So I then decided to investigate in detail and without fail to make clear to myself which were the measures he took and how he subsequently actualized them in order to help these unfortunates to deliver themselves from the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer, which had passed to them by heredity and was so maleficent for them. And so as one of my chief tasks during the last sojourn of mine in person there, on the surface of your planet, I made a detailed investigation and elucidation of the whole of the further, very saintly activities there among your favorites, of that great essence-loving now, most high, very saintly, common cosmic, individual, Ashyata Shaimash. And as regards that marble tablet, which has by chance survived since the time of the very saintly activities of the great Ashiata Shaimash, and is now there the principal sacred relic of the brotherhood of the initiated beings called the Brotherhood al I happened to see and read the contents engraved on it during this last sojourn of mine there. On this still surviving marble were inscriptions concerning the sacred being impulses called faith, love, and hope, namely, faith of consciousness is freedom, faith of feeling is weakness, faith of body is stupidity. Love of consciousness evokes the same in response. Love of feeling evokes the opposite. Love of body depends on type and polarity. Hope of consciousness is strength. Hope of feeling is slavery. Hope of body is disease. It is easy to think that this marble tablet containing the aphorism of faith, love, and hope must somehow represent the essence of Gajev's teaching. Perhaps, like me, you might even have taken a magic marker to write it in large letters on your wall. My mother commented, you are lost now. I was 21 at the time, having returned to the family home after having a Bachelor of Science in Physics from Georgetown University. Then, when Mr. Nyland dissolved his New York City groups, my teacher in tears turned to this chapter with this marble tablet to console us. Now, 55 years later, I have begun to wonder if this aphorism is really as deep as it seems. The glaring problem here is why use faith, love, and hope in an aphorism in the first place, when Ashiata Shaimash determined that the factors for engendering in the presence of beings of this planet, the sacred being impulses of faith, hope, and love are already quite degenerated in them. Beelzebub goes on at length to discuss the distortion of these impulses. Even today, faith merely stands for what religion one belongs to. Love has been reduced to the required fake sex scene in every movie, and hope for the planet is rapidly disappearing with the fixation of the day, climate change. Then why make a marble tablet? for these three failed being impulses in the first place. 
Clearly, this tablet is saying that to obtain consciousness is the goal, but perhaps there was a more useful way to express this. It certainly does not explain what consciousness is, and for that matter, what feeling is. When examining these chapters 25 through 28 of Beelzebub's Tales, one has to wonder, is Kachev just messing with our minds? After all, his stated goal in the first series is to mercilessly destroy the beliefs and views about everything existing in the world. Is this aphorism just a carrot and a stick to us donkeys to make us look for a more meaningful explanation of the work? These chapters of Beelzebub's tales are a real roller coaster of events. After being tantalized with the discoveries of the amazing, most saintly Ashad Shaimash, spelled out in his Legomenism titled The Terror of the Situation, and reading of his exponential success in spreading the truth, we cannot help but wish to find that secret group. It used to be a lot harder. But then we are hit with the real terror of the situation, the horrible destruction of Ashiata Shaimash's groups, when an egotistical person named Lentro Hamsonin, Kajevism of Lenin, Trotsky, Stalin, convinced the masses that freedom was more important. It is interesting that Kajev invented hell in order to send this person there who had destroyed his own attempts to gain initiates. Perhaps he also had in mind another person, O, period, who studied under him and abandoned him. Many have proposed that the saintly person, Ashiata Shaimash, was meant to stand for Gajev himself, since there are no records of such a person in history. The proof of this is in the slip-up of Beelzebub in the Legomenon. It says, All the sacred individuals here before me, especially and intentionally actualized from above, have always endeavored while striving for the same aim to accomplish the task laid upon them through one of the other of these three sacred ways for self-perfecting, preordained by our endless Creator Himself, namely through the sacred ways based on the being impulses called faith, hope, and love. Who were these sacred individuals? Babylon existed from 1895 to 539 B.C. Hammurabi, who codified their laws, was 1810 to 1750 B.C. Thus, Ashiat Shamash would have preceded all the major religions that occurred during the period of religions at around 550 B.C., give or take 50 years on each side. This would include Lao Tse, Krishna of the Mahabharata, Buddha, and Zoroaster. And this is true of the Abrahamic Jewish religion, which has Moses' exodus dated to after Akhenaten in 1336 B.C., Yet the so-called books of Moses, which are now believed to have been composed during their exile under Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon in 587 BC. This is due to the similarity of Genesis to the Sumerian seven tablets of creation. Of course, Jesus 0 AD and Mohammed 600 AD were much later, and these appear to be the only ones that use the three concepts of faith, love, and hope. These two modern religions must be those that Kujev, not Ashiata Shamash, is referring to. As to Islam, many doubt that the Quran, which they believe was derived from Syriac Christian hymns, can promote universal love, given that the jihadists who promote killing unbelievers for the faith are promised entry into heaven to frolic with 72 virgins, although the correct translation from Aramaic is grapes, not virgins. Perhaps the marble tablet existed in the Saramon Brotherhood, to which Gajev was invited to, in his second series, Meetings with Remarkable Men. Thus the legend of Ashiara Shaimash might have been known by them. According to Major Martin's account, this is in Wikipedia, 
The motto of the Saramuni is said to be, work produces a sweet essence. This reminds me of what a dear friend of mine, an expert on Gajivisms, pointed out to me that for many years he had translated the name Ashiata Shaimash as, as ye ought, as ye must. But now, after understanding Gajev's personality, he believes it has a deeper meaning, and it might be the humorous, as I shit, as ye mash. As crazy or disappointing as this may feel, this new take on Kajev's intent is actually supported by the destruction of Ashiata Shaimash's groups and Kajev's many groups, culminating in the Priory at Fontainebleau. The moral of the story is that all internal positive change attempted in society inevitably turns to shit. So let's discuss definitions. So on to the main purpose of this paper, or shall I say the task that Kuchev set us to study, to pass the significance of the aphorism faith, love, and hope. First, we need to define faith, love, and hope, and then to define each when applied to consciousness, feeling, and body. So the definition of faith, Strong's Concordance of Greek, says properly, persuasion, to be persuaded, to come to trust. Faith has been co-opted by the church as being synonymous with religion itself. It is really a contract between you and God. For instance, you promise to keep God's commandments and God shows favor to you and accepts you into heaven. Jesus never defines faith, but says it is the most important thing to have. Jesus said to them, I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. That's in Matthew 17, 20. Joseph's Barnabas, Jesus' younger brother, says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrews 11.1. 1. In meetings with remarkable men, Gujev's friend Abram Yelov, chapter 6, describes faith as conscience, which is linked to a person's religion only in childhood. He says it is not a question of to whom a man prays, but a question of his faith. Faith is conscience the foundation of which is laid in childhood. If a man changes his religion, he loses his conscience. And conscience is the most valuable thing in a man. I respect his conscience, and since his conscience is sustained by his faith, and his faith by his religion, therefore I respect his religion. And for me, it would be a great sin if I should begin to judge his religion or to delusion him about it, and thus destroy his conscience, which can only be acquired in childhood. Also in meetings with remarkable men, Professor Skridlov, Chapter 10, Father Giovanni of the World Brotherhood equates faith with understanding. Faith cannot be given to a man. Faith arises in a man and increases in its actions in him, not as a result of automatic learning that is, from any automatic ascertainment of height, breadth, thickness, form, and weight, or from the perception of anything by sight, hearing, touch, smell, or taste, but from understanding. Understanding is the essence obtained from information intentionally learned and from all kinds of experiences personally experienced. And now St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, 11 through 12 had a similar analogy that could apply to Father Giovanni's definition of faith. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see in a mirror dimly. 
but then face to face. And to explain this in the ancient metallic mirror, we see an indistinct image, reflection, but to get an accurate picture, a reflection, we need to look from different angles, standpoints. And he continues, Now I partook of gnosis, but then obtained gnosis, even as I have been in gnosis. This is similar to Simon Magus's expression, he who stood, stands, and will stand. So now, on to the definition of love. Strong's Concordance of Greek, he says, love of friendship, regard with affection, cherish, kiss, and that's filio, love. Jesus' agapio, to love, means actively doing what the Lord prefers with him by his power and direction. 1 John 4, 8, 16, 11. Preferring agapio is Christ living his life through the believer. Hashiach Shaimash defines agape love. Never do beings men hear love with genuine, impartial, and non-egotistical love. That's in Beelzebub's Tales 26, 3, 58. Jesus teaches Peter about the difference of types of love in John 21, 15 through 17, where Jesus tries to teach Peter about agape love, but Peter still thinks filial love is the same. So by the third time, Jesus gives up. And it goes like this. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you agape love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I filial love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you agape love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I filial love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you filio love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you filio love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I filio love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. St. Paul's definition of agape love is in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Agape love is patient, it is kind, it does not envy, it does not brag, it is not puffed up, it does not behave inappropriately, it does not seek its own way, it is not provoked, it keeps no account of wrong, it does not rejoice over injustice, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, it endures all things. Agape love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there is speech, it will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. So now the definition of hope, Strong's Concordance in Greek. To anticipate, welcome. Properly, future expectation of what is true, certain hope for salvation, Mercy, Resurrection. The Jews, and especially the Essenes, had always hoped for the restoration of the temple, as quoted in Daniel 9, 24-25, where weeks were symbolic of hundreds of years. Seventy weeks of years are decreed concerning your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin and to atone for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and prophet, and to anoint a most holy place. Know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. 
When John the Baptist and Jesus were killed and the temple was destroyed by the Romans, many became Christians, with hope now turned to resurrection through Jesus. And now in these times, the expectation of an apocalypse. Thus hope does not have a good history of fulfillment. St. Paul states that the problem of expecting hope to be manifested in the present is a mistake because hope transcends the present. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. That's 1 Corinthians 15.19. Gajev goes on a tirade against hope, calling it the biggest stumbling block. Chapter 26.36 Thanks to the disease tomorrow, the three-brained beings there, particularly the contemporary ones, always put off later everything that needs to be done at the moment, being convinced that later they will do it better and more. And then concerning faith, hope, and love. For the Christian church, St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, 2, 3, gives the most complete and poetic explanation of faith, love, and hope, while declaring that agape love is the most important. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have agape love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but I do not have agape love, I gain nothing. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is agape love. 1 Corinthians 13.13 Gujev, through Ashiata Shaimash's legomenism, sees the solution to the restoration of faith, love, and hope, to be through objective conscience, which is not yet atrophied in them, but remains in their presences almost in its primordial state. That's chapter 26, 259. Having defined faith, love, and hope, we are better able to evaluate Gachev's aphorism. The analysis will show how faith, love, and hope Apply first to consciousness, then to feeling, and then to body. Since there are three, it is implied that they represent the three bodies of man-woman, soul, spirit, and body. So now, consciousness is the mind, and thus the soul. So, the Lugamanism says, faith of consciousness is freedom. This appears to be the intended winning combination, but is it? There also is a problem of definition because Gurdjieff defined objective conscience to be the solution when manifested in consciousness, that it must be assumed that the word consciousness here implies being part of Judy or in Uspensky terminology, observing oneself impartially, and to have faith in it is good. However, as we have seen here, faith tends to be passive, and thus consciousness might just be a statement of membership in the Gajev Uspensky Club. Worse than the definition of consciousness is the word freedom. This is an unfortunate word, as Gajev has shown in chapter 28, in the chief culprit in the destruction of all the various saintly labors of Ashiata Shaimash, that the concept of freedom destroyed all the good works of Ashiata Shaimash when he convinced others that man's greatest happiness consisted in not being dependent on any other personality whatsoever and in being free from the influence of any other person, whoever he may be. That's chapter 28, 395. Rather than freedom, consciousness should create sorrow as stated in Ashiata Shaimash's organization, the factors for the being impulse conscience arise in the presences of three brain being from the localization of the particles of the emanation of the sorrow of our omni loving and long suffering endless creator. That is why the source of the manifestation of genuine conscience in three centered beings 
is sometimes called the representative of the Creator. And this sorrow is formed in our all-maintaining common Father from the struggle constantly proceeding in the universe between joy and sorrow. This is in chapter 27, 372. And so only he who consciously assists the process of this inner struggle and consciously assists the non-desires to predominate over the desires behaves in accordance with the essence of our common Father Creator Himself, whereas he who with his consciousness assists the contrary only increases his sorrow. And now the aphorism says, Love of consciousness evokes the same in response. This might be an analogy of St. Paul's mirror in the discussion of faith, but the invoking of emotion is contrary to the creation of consciousness. Consciousness is freedom from emotion, thus the need to be impartial. Self-love can be as destructive as self-criticism. And now the aphorism, hope of consciousness is strength. How can the concept of tomorrow contribute to strength in the work? Consciousness must exist in the present. So now we have feeling, and feeling is of the heart, and thus of the Kastjanian body or spirit. And the aphorism says, faith of feeling is weakness. Certainly there are gradations of feeling, from a needle prick to lamenting lost love to the experiencing of one's death. Of course, to have faith of feeling would be weakness because feeling can be misled, just as thought can be misled. However, if it is emotion from the heart, then it would be aligned with conscience, which would be strength, as Ashyata Shaimas discovered, as told in his Legomenism, Terror of the Situation. So why is it said to be weakness? And then the aphorism says, love of feeling evokes the opposite. Now the opposite of love is hate. It seems that love can neither evoke hate nor hate to evoke love. Perhaps one might say that the Christian concept of agape love is the opposite of filial love, where the latter has no permanence as it is tainted by ego and sexual desire. But filial love cannot evoke agape love because agape love is selfless. So the aphorism, hope of feeling, is slavery. To be ruled by feelings would be slavery indeed. But to apply agape love towards our relationships to the golden rule would achieve the greatest hope, and that is to achieve a Kestjanian body or spirit and to reach heaven. But hope in heaven could be slavery if it prevented you from obtaining the higher goal of a soul. So now body is the physical body. And the aphorism says faith of body is stupidity. If one believes in faith healing, that is stupidity. The body is an amazing piece of machinery and it can often repair itself as long as one applies the proper healing methods. Obviously, faith of body means to indulge in the pleasures of the body by drugs and other means, and that would be short-sighted. And then the aphorism, love of body, depends on type and polarity. Yes, there are many combinations of the human genome, and the YX and XX chromosomes are male and female. However, to mistake hormones for love is only relevant to continue the human species. And now the aphorism, hope of body is disease. One should not denigrate one's body by calling it disease, but rather to have hope that this vehicle will survive long enough to build spirit and soul within. Of course, we must always remember that the body dies, and it is only here for a short span, and so one should not waste one's lifetime with bodily pleasures. In conclusion, as it has been shown, the aphorism itself of faith, love, and hope is a disappointment, and it could have been expressed better. 
as a whole, it seems to be nothing but shamash. Rather than end on a discouraging note, I will try using sections of chapter 26 to construct a more useful aphorism. The words of Ashiata Shaimash, a.k.a. Gajev. During the period of my year of special observations on all their manifestations and perceptions, I made it categorically clear to myself that although the factors for engendering in their presences of the sacred being impulses of faith, love, and hope are already quite degenerated in the beings of this planet, Nevertheless, the factor which ought to engender that being impulse on which the whole psyche of beings of the three-brained being system is in general based and which impulse exists under the name of objective conscience is not yet atrophied in them, but remains in their presences almost in its primordial state. I decided to consecrate the whole of myself from that time on to the creation here of such conditions that the functioning of the sacred conscience still surviving in their subconscious might gradually pass into the functioning of their ordinary consciousness. This is in chapter 26, 360. And then for it to participate without fail in the functioning of that consciousness of theirs under the direction of which their daily waking existence flows and furthermore, if this being impulse were to be maintained over a long period through every aspect of this consciousness of theirs. That's chapter 26, 365. Now, I believe that the real stumbling block of the work comes from the mistake of jumping straight into trying to achieve objective consciousness, which creates the soul, without first building a foundation for it with objective conscience, which creates spirit. It is that grain of mustard seed, of objective conscience, which Ashiata Shaimash talks about, within the emotional center that knows the right or wrong of an action. It is too easy to rationalize bad actions mentally. Thus the growth of objective conscience must begin with agape love, which was the true Christian principle set out by Jesus and St. Paul. So here is the aphorism that I have written, and I hope it will be helpful to you. Consciousness, Consciousness of, the of the frontal, frontal brain, brain is, is the, the growth, growth of the soul. soul. Consciousness, Consciousness of, of the, the rear brain, brain is repetition. repetition. Consciousness of the midbrain is sleep. Emotion of the heart is conscience, which is spirit. Emotion of the senses is transitory. Emotion of the sexual center is reproduction. Action of the body aids consciousness. Pain of the body awakens emotion. Hunger of the body feeds the body. Finally, to address the second title, or how Lentro Hampson and Lenin Trotsky Stalin destroyed it. It's a Gajevism. As we've seen, this is the character that destroyed all the works of Ashiata Shaimash, and one could assume that's also of Gajev. In this section of a radio television program, they were talking about Gurdjieff and his relationship to important people in the Russian Empire. And this one little phrase here is quite intriguing. Stalin quickly deciphered the last part of the word in Lenin, Trotsky, but Hampsonin. He didn't know. So he said, who is Hampsonin? The master of the Kremlin suddenly lifted the telephone receiver. Find Georgi Gajev. The invisible signals and orders flew ahead. A telephone rang in Stalin's office. A familiar voice slavishly said, 
Be at ease, Koba. Kuchev died last year in France, in the American hospital in Nuhi. Did he say anything before he died? asked Stalin grimly. Yes, he said. I leave you in a difficult situation. Damn that Lentro Hampson in.